Diels-Alder reaction is a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition. The reactants in the Diels-Alder reaction are a 1,3-diene and an alkene called a dienophile. The reason it is referred to a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition is because the 4 pi electrons of the diene will add to the 2 pi electrons of the dienophile. The dienophile usually contains an electron withdrawing group. This is usually in conjugation with the double bond, thus making the double bond electron poor and initiating the addition reaction. The double bond of the dienophile then adds to the diene to give the product a six-membered ring. This reaction occurs in one step, or a concerted step. The Diels-Alder reaction is also stereospecific, so the con configuration of the reactants are retained during the reaction. In the case of cyclic dienes, this will give stereoisomeric products as well. In your experiment today, you will be reacting anthracene and malic anhydride. The four pi electrons of the diene, which will be anthracene, will add to the two pi electrons of the dienophile, the malic anhydride, to give the product of a polycyclic Diels-Alder product. The reaction will be conducted under reflux conditions. You will be putting a round bottom flask into your heating apparatus and then placing a condenser into the, heat, into the round bottom flask, remembering to grease the bottom of the condenser before adding it to the flask. You will also be greasing the vent, the small vent you will have at the top. As you can see, we'll be using a thermometer adapter as our small vent. You want to make sure you grease both of these things so they do not stick at the end of the experiment. In your heating mantle, you want to make sure that you have a little bit of sand at the bottom. Also, below the heating mantle, you want to either put a round cork or a ring clamp in order to hold it up so you can dismantle the apparatus at any time during the experiment. Also, attached to your condenser, you'll have the bottom tube, which will be the water in, and the top, which will be the water out. You will also need to make sure that you attach your transformer to your heating mantle, and then plug that into the outlet. You want to keep your heat at about 3 during the experiment. Once you have added all of your reactants into the round bottom flask, and also a minimal amount of boiling chips because we do not want to add too many since you will have too many boiling chips compared to your solid at the end. Then we'll be turning on the water and the heat. You'll be refluxing this for 30 minutes before you will remove your round bottom flask and place in an ice bath for 10 minutes allowing the solid to crystallize. Then, you will be using vacuum filtration to filtrate out your solid as you've done in previous labs. Once you have retrieved your solid, you will be weighing your solid and calculating percent yield. As you can see, the solution is starting to bubble, which means you know that the heat is fine. Once it begins to reflux, that is when you can start your time for 30 minutes. This is where you can tell 
that the solution has begun to reflux. As you see, it condensing up into the condenser. Once you have refluxed for 30 minutes, you will remove the round bottom flask and place into an ice bath for 10 minutes. As you can see, that as it cools, the crystals are already starting to form. You will then use vacuum filtration, as you've done in weeks past, to remove the solid from the solvent. You will then weigh your, weigh your yield and calculate your percent yield at the end.